I did something extremely stupid, guys. I relived an episode of fit to fat to fit. And let me tell you, it was a dumb idea. Now, if you've ever lost weight before, you know that you can do it because you have. So that's what I thought going into it. I lost weight before, I'll do it again. Now, I didn't take into account I never gained weight to that certain extent of 30 to 40 pounds just to lose it all back right away. Um, I was sadly mistaken. Now see what I didn't take into account was the mental aspect that goes into gaining weight and losing weight. When you watch the show, you get a little bit of that. You see the trainers, they, they kind of go through it, but I just thought that was TV. I thought, I thought it was extra. I thought it was just the added dramatics to make the show better. Because again, if you've lost weight before, you know, well, some people, me specifically, it wasn't that hard. It's just a matter of getting into that mentality but I mean, again, I'd never gained 30 to 40 pounds, especially within a four month limit. Mine was three months. Now, big component of what I didn't take into account was the mental health aspect. When I tell you, I went through some of the hardest levels of depression and anxiety that I've ever dealt with. It was serious. And at times I, I did not think I would come back from it. Now, before I go deeper, I want to reiterate, do not try this at home, please. For the sake of your sanity, do not try this at home. Don't do it. Along with feelings of depression and anxiety, I also dealt with high levels of irritation, agitation, aggravation, however aspect you want to look at it. My emotions were out of whack and I had absolutely no control. Um, I don't know if the pandemic had something to do with it as well, but all in all, it was a horrible idea. So I'm going on my third month of weight loss right now. It took me two months to get my face down enough and swelling to feel comfortable enough to make this video. I tried making this video about a month ago. I didn't like the way my face looked. It was just too swollen. It was not me. I, I just, I couldn't even recognize myself. So I had absolutely no intention on letting that footage release. <laughs> okay, let's get into how I even put on the weight. I was doing any and everything. I was doing too much, honestly. I was eating all types of restaurants. I'm talking about McDonald's, Carl's Jr., Panda Express, anything I could get my hands on that I knew was high in calories. And I was eating boxes of candy. I probably, so I, I would go to the dollar store, pig out on candy. I mean, you got big boxes of candy for a dollar. I think each box had a serving. So I like sweet tarts. So I would do a couple boxes of sweet tarts. I would do Butterfingers. Um, I'm doing everything. But I think a box of sweet tarts is, I, I want to say like 240 calories per serving. And I don't know how much servings off the top of my head it had. But I'm like I said, I'm eating a couple boxes, uh, burgers, shakes, ice cream. Uh, and I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> so, you know, I was forcing, uh, you know, the, this project because I don't, I don't even eat ice cream, on, you know, on a regular, just due to, you know, my intolerance of dairy. Uh, man. Now here's the kicker prior to starting this video, I was bulky. And then I had I started to cut and 
I was getting pretty, pretty uh, close to my goal when I decided to do this video. I still had half a container of weight gainer. Yeah, you heard that right, weight gainer. I was taking weight gainer shakes on top of this. <laughs> yeah, I know, I already said what I was doing was idiotic. <laughs> yeah, so in the midst of the three months, I put the weight on fairly quickly and um, that was a huge mistake. So let's get into the emotional aspect of this experiment. When I tell you the levels of depression were so high that there was days I didn't even want to get out of bed. Yeah, I, I would just, if I could, I would just sleep all day. It was, it was such a weird feeling. And I had this constant mental fog. Like I could not think clearly at all. I could not hold a thought. I would just kind of lose track of what I was thinking. And, and this was constantly, I, I would have a thought and I'd be uh, going through my thought and all of a sudden I just, I uh, kind of went blank and it was starting to get to the point where it was annoying because I had no control and the damage was already done. I couldn't just unwind this experiment. Now the nasty part, I was producing so much mucus that I was choking. I go to sleep and I literally wake up with so much mucus and so I kept a few bottles next to me. Disclaimer, this is the gross part. I would use these bottles to spit this mucus up. It was so much that I couldn't just keep getting up and go to the restroom. It was it was so much that I would just ha I had to use these bottles. Like I said, it was it was gross. And that let me know that the experiment was just getting way too out of hand. Now let's talk about the breathing. I could not breathe. I could not catch my breath just sitting down, I was having trouble breathing and it was horrible and embarrassing because if there was somebody in the room, they would point it out that they can hear me breathing. <laughs> so for the pandemic, I decided to be with my family, you know, just in case something were to happen, you know, I'd be around. So I'm from California. I'm always gone. I'm always in another state trying to, you know, live out my career, trying to, you know, advance my career. And when the pandemic hit, I decided to go back home to be with family for a little bit, just in case, because you were hearing the worst. You were hearing about people dying left and right. So I wanted to be with my family in the event that something happened, that I got those last moments at least. And so in being home, you know, grandmothers are going to speak their mind. <laughs> so my grandma would co constantly tell me how fat I am, <laughs> which is, is weird. It's just, it's just not me. Anybody who knows me knows that it's not me to just be fat. <laughs> now in losing the weight, it was very difficult because how do you go from feeling normal to this cloudy feeling, these intense feelings of depression and go back to normal. It's, it's hard to put your body in a horrible environment and then pull it right back out from that horrible environment that you just put it through. It's not a normal function of the body. Things like that shock the body. Mind you, I didn't even count calories. I was just eating until I couldn't eat anymore just because I wanted to put on as much as I possibly could. Yeah, four months was out of the question. There was no way I was gonna complete four months of that. So I, after three months, I gained about 40 pounds. And boy, let me tell you the journey it took. Now, after putting your body through something like that, it's not easy to get started on losing the weight. Luckily for me, I had the discipline and the willpower to pull myself through. Now I am burning about 35 ish, uh, 100 calories a day. I try to stay in that ballpark and I'm eating about 2,500 calories a day. So I typically 
like to have that thousand calorie deficit. Now, that's a very dangerous range, but for me, I am desperate to get this weight off. So I, I need, I, I have to do this. And on top of that, it's, it's really not that uncomfortable. So what I'm doing, I'm doing intermittent fasting and my window, I have a six hour window. So I'll start typically two hours ish after I wake up. But regardless of when I do eat, I try to always eat bef right before I go to the gym so that I have that power to really lift heavy weight. But for the most part, once I start eating and then I have six hours to get my 2,500 calories in, it's really easy. So I eat a big breakfast. I start with half a cup of oats with almond milk and then I'll do uh, six eggs. I use a teaspoon of olive oil and I measure everything out. Then I typically do around five to 10 ounces of strawberries with two teaspoons of peanut butter, uh, all with the oats. Um, and then I do three slices of turkey bacon. And so that's my breakfast. Oh, also with a uh, yogurt to my breakfast. So that all that together, that's, that's well over a thousand calories right there alone. And then after my workout, I do about 20 to 30 ounces of watermelon. Uh, that's my recovery snack. I, f I feel amazing. It helps me uh, get more water in as well as uh, it just is, it's, to me, it's a snack. It's the best snack I'm, I'm going to get because I try to keep the sugar low outside of, you know, the yogurt and I do take protein shakes. And so with the protein shakes, got a little bit of sugar in that. Um, obviously strawberry has sugar, the peanut butter has sugar. So I try to outside, I try not to have any added sugars, all natural. Um, but regardless, I'm, I'm working it off around, you know, that six hour mark, then we're done. And I'm not hungry really until the next day in the morning. And so even though I have a thousand calorie deficit, it's not always perfect, but for the most part, it stays in that range. Even though I have a thousand calorie deficit, I'm not hurting to eat. So I think, I truly believe, cause this is the first time I'm doing this. I truly believe that inter intermittent fasting actually works after doing it for months. I will say I that that is the, the best plan that I've seen. I got this from Dr. Ian Smith. Shout out to Dr. Ian Smith. Uh, he's the, the king of the intermittent fasting weight, lo weight loss. If you ever watch any of the, you know, top weight loss shows and uh, top uh, doctor uh, shows like Doc Oz, things of that nature, he's always featured. He's always one of the biggest names that comes on these platforms. So I decided to follow his route. And let me tell you, Dr. Ian Smith knows what he's talking about. He absolutely knows what he's talking about. He typically uh, recommends a 12 hour window. Like I said, I am a stubborn, stubborn, disciplined person. <laughs> First, I went from walking a mile to jogging a mile to then running a mile and then a couple miles and then came uh, stair climbers and weights. Well, weights were throughout the whole thing, but stair climbers, I was avoiding the stair climbers until I got the mile down to about eight-ish minutes. And then I started doing a stair climber. And then we upped the cardio from there. I got pretty, pretty good at that. So I took it to the next level. I did endurance weightlifting. And so I did this workout that I got from Mike Rasheed. Shout out to Mike Rasheed of YouTube. So he has this, uh, I don't know if it's a pyramid or a stacking. I don't know what he calls it. I would have to go back and look. But he has this workout where you do one rep, then you do two reps, then you do three, all the way to 20. And I, I worked myself up to that. So I did it with 135. And of course, the first couple of times was hard. Then I got it all the way up to 225. Um, today, I just did it with 225 and I am burnt out. Now I'm starting to be in the best shape I've actually ever been in. I mean, 
I'm starting to get into better shape than when I was in high school. I mean, some of the weight that I'm putting up on the weight bench is, is ridiculous. I never thought I'd see, you know, the day where I'm benching 295 like it's nothing, you know, like no no assistance. That's, that's just not something that <laughs> I saw coming for myself. In the beginning, when I started walking, I would do a brisk walk in about 10 minutes into the walk, my fingers would swell. My fingers and my my ankles would swell, my knees would start to hurt, but the intense pressure that I would get, like it, it felt like my, my fingers were gonna pop. It, it got scary. It got scary. I, I took I took the this experiment way too far. Uh man. Things could have things could have definitely ended bad. That those times were scary because I never thought that I would come back. I, I thought I was done for good. I mean, like I said, I felt like my fingers were gonna explode. You look at my hand, my hand at times would be purple. It got scary. If any of you ever experience anything like that, please go see a doctor. That's something I should have done, but like I said, I I have a stubborn willpower, and so I pushed myself through it. Luckily for me, nothing bad happened. Again, if that is something that you are experiencing, you need to go see a health professional. So moral of the story, I got through it, I lived it. I have about a month left of weight to lose. I, I got uh, 20 pounds of the 40 pounds off. I know I can get the rest off. I work out every day, I just have to up, I have to up my game. I gotta take take it to another level, and so stay tuned, please. Uh, when the uh, be, please be looking out for the video. When the full video comes out, please like and subscribe to the channel. Please watch it, because I did this for you all. Even though it was stupid, I shouldn't have did it. But hey, I did it for you all. So I hope you all enjoy. Thank you.